Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard here with Mushroom Wonderland on YouTube and Instagram. And I'm in western Washington right now, about uh, 300 feet above sea level. It's a cold, rainy December day and we are uh, right in the middle of December now. And so mushrooms are really kind of starting to slow down. And then I looked at the forecast and it looks like it's uh, calling for freezing temperatures and snow next week, which is probably gonna put an end to most, if not all of the rest of the mushrooms that are growing this year in 2021. Been a little bit of a weird season, I'm gonna admit. Uh, there were still plenty of mushrooms out, but they were just kind of growing in weird spots. Uh, places where I found a lot before, I didn't find many. Um, and then I found uh, the same mushrooms I was looking for like later in the season and I don't know It was just kind of a weird year all around But there was still definitely a lot of mushrooms to find and so we're gonna go take a walk through the forest right now um, And see what kind of mushrooms are growing out here in middle of December and it's kind of slushy rain right now today It's about 38 degrees and uh, it's a nasty little day, but I got my raincoat on and my beanie and so let's just go out and let's see what's still growing out here. See what we can identify and uh, get an idea of the mycoflora going on in mid-December in Western Washington. So let's go. Hey, if you could hit subscribe and uh, put a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and leave a positive uh, comment, that'd give me an idea of what you want to see on future videos. And it also kind of helps the channel to grow when you leave comments and thumbs ups, things like that. So. Uh, Cool, let's go check out what mushrooms are growing out here. Thanks for joining. So my dog and I are walking through this park, come across this little patch of mushrooms growing here. Um, there's a few of them growing right here alongside this coniferous little patch of uh, fir trees growing in this park right on the edge of the, uh, of the grass. And um, this one's kind of beat up looking, but these are pretty common around here this time of year and this is a got a very umbo knit cap that means it's got that real point on the cap and it's kind of separating here on the cap because it's old and it's got this real kind of fibrous stringy stalk it's got these really wide gills and uh and the cap actually it kind of has like fibrous hairs that run from the center out towards the margin looks like a real nipple right there in the middle doesn't it but uh, this is an Inosabe species, so these are really common growing around here. Some of them are actually pretty toxic, so these could be confused for Merasmius or Aedes. But these ones are Inosabe, and one way I can tell is to really get a nice look at uh, you know the cap. It's got like these little, uh, it looks like fibers. Uh, the whole cap is held together by little fibers. That's one way I can tell an Inosabe from other mushrooms um, and there's just tons of these little kind of whitish colored mushrooms out right now and then uh, growing right here next to these inosabi we got this weird little black guy check this thing out so look at that isn't that a strange little mushroom so this is what's known commonly as an elfin saddle because it kind of looks like a saddle that an elf could ride on can you imagine that can you see that and then look at the uh, look at the stipe it's all kind of twisted and it's a really weird kind of flesh to it um it's not like your typical mushroom it does not have gills underneath there or a, or a poor surface so this is a uh, ascomycete uh so there are two kind of main types of mushroom types if you will uh above ground fruiting bodies for mushrooms and there's the ascomites and the basidiomites and basidiomycete is a mushroom that has a uh, stem and a cap with gills or a pore surface drop spores from underneath the cap pretty much like what most most mushrooms uh look like that you think of um that would be a basidiomycete and this one's an ascomycete and so um it grows spores in ascus and ascomite uh the the root word for that is actually latin for uh for a wine bag so they used to hear a wine sack you know they would carry their wine like in a sheep stomach and that's kind of what this is reminiscent of is like um, that kind of weird uh, sort of dry and membranous sort of material. But this is uh, Helvella vespertina. This is, uh, this is one of the uh, elephant saddles that grows here in western Washington and it's growing pretty late in December. So uh, it's a pretty common one. You can find it growing in the grass. 
in yards and uh, near coniferous trees. And so this is kind of related to a morel because it is an ascomycete, just like a morel is, or a paziza, um, cup fungi, stuff like that. So yeah, that's a uh, Helvella vespertina, pretty common one. And that one's edible, so you could eat that if you want. Very wet out here. This is like a neighborhood park near my house. Beautiful forest over here, so I like to come on little mushroom walks over here. This is a perfect, uh, perfect habitat for ectomycorrhizal mushrooms here in the Northwest. And uh, so I like to stroll through here and find all kinds of cool mycorrhizal mushrooms. Not a lot growing out here this time of year, I'll tell you that right now. Most of the mushrooms have fruited and have just gone away. Look right here, we got the mush, the leftovers of some mushrooms that have decomposed. And I'm betting those are a uh, Plutea species that were growing there and they're just totally uh, mushed. So most of these mushrooms, they, uh, they, they like to fruit right around October when it's around 55 degrees or so and real wet. Look at right here. Growing on the side of the trail. Man, would you look at that? We got ourselves a little golden chanterelle. Cantharellus formosus growing right here, December 15th in western Washington, just peeking its head out of the out of the moss. And this one isn't mush at all. This is a perfect specimen. Yeah, so this is uh this is the Pacific Golden Chanterelle or Cantharellus formosus. A lot of people love this mushroom to eat. Really good edible mycorrhizal mushroom. See my dog, he smells more of them. Nah, I'm just kidding. He thinks he smells a piece of pizza in there or something. But uh, yeah, a lot of you looking for golden chanterelles. Um, my wife loves them, all my family love them. They kind of give me a stomach ache, but uh, I'm actually really pretty astonished to see this out here in the middle of dark and dreary and cold December looking so fresh and young popping out of the moss like that so yeah, that's pretty cool so there's hope if you want to go find some golden chanterelles there's hope for you yet we're going to kick some of those spores if we can and uh and we're going to keep on moving so that was pretty neat pretty neat little find gunner good job boy uh, kind of surprising to see chanterelles doing that well this late in the season oh look on this log of course this mushroom's going to be growing this one basically grows all year round. This is like a, uh, this is like an evergreen of mushrooms, you know? It just keeps on growing and it could grow for decades. This is Fomitopsis monsiae. This is a uh, the common red-belted conch. It used to be called Fomitopsis uh, pinacola, but it had recently been classified. That's a European taxonomy. And this one here in the western part of the United States is uh, now called Fomitopsis monsiae. You see these little blobs growing on logs all the time. They got a white pore surface, this is a, called a polypore. That's the type of mushroom it is, and it's just as hard as tree bark, you know. And some people claim these are medicinal. So you could pluck these off of the logs and make tea out of them if you want. Um, I'm gonna pass. These are also probably the most common fungus uh, out here in the Pacific Northwest that's visible, you know. It's like the most common mushroom, if you will, that you'll see on trees and stumps all times of the year. So these will have snow on them and they just keep on growing. And this white edge is the belt. And this part can often be red. So it gets the name, the red belted conch, even though this one's pretty dark and you don't see much red on it. That's exactly what it is. Fomitopsis monsiae. Come on, let's go boy. We got something down here. What do we got here? Growing on this dead twig, man. I've seen these growing all year long. And this one, uh. This one's always growing on a dead stick, and they were one of the first to come out the season and still one of the last to be out here. We're going to pick this guy. Look at that stem. It's like totally black. That's why one of its, uh, that's why uh, its common name, shared with a few other mushrooms, is called the black-footed polypore. Uh, this is Picepes badius, or the black-footed polypore, and it's always growing off of a stick. Really vase-shaped. And very woody. It's a it's a polypore, so it's related to that foamy topsis monsia we were looking at. And uh, you probably wouldn't want to eat something like that. It'd be like chewing on a piece of bark or a stick. 
but uh, kind of a pretty addition to the forest. And so it is a, uh, it, it emits its spores from underneath here on this poor surface underneath. And then look how dark that, that stem on that is, or the stipe. And so they call that a blackfoot or the blackfooted polypore uh, growing here with another little relative. So here we just help, we just help to spread some spores out into the woods. This guy was totally mature and it's just going to decompose from here anyways. And as I'm looking at these Picepes badius, I look right here on this log and what do we have here? This one's kind of a cool one. Some people are real into that. And man, I'm really sorry about this uh, lighting. I should probably turn the light on on the camera. Hold on. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. I think that's a little bit better, but look at this guy. Oh man, that is some jelly, nasty looking stuff, right? This is known as witch's butter. So I guess witches make butter and then they smear it on the uh, coniferous logs out here. And this one, it kind of grows in these sort of like uh, scalloped, um, you know, little blobs, not not little cups. Uh, these are like little little round o ovioid shaped blobs. And this is a uh, Tremella messerteneca or uh, witch's butter. Look at some of it's got their got the color kind of washed out of it by all this recent rain. And so it's really actually just kind of clear. So yeah, totally edible. Some people uh, make fancy recipes. You can mix it in your eggs. Or you could eat it just raw like that if you want. Uh, if you like the texture of boogers, and that's a perfect one for you, which is butter or the uh, Tremella Messerteneca. Yeah, so we're having a good walk out here, but I'm telling you, it's getting dark, and it'll probably be too dark for me to spot any mushrooms soon. So, uh, oh look, we got a little bit more which is butter growing right here, Tremella Messerteneca. Can you dare me? Eh, we'll taste it. Wow, I, I would like to say that it tastes like nothing. But, there's like a little hint of like some fruitiness and then mushroominess. So like, that surprised me. It tastes like a little bit like, like really faintly like tricks or something. Like trick cereal or Fruit Loops. That's weird, cool. Well, I've never really tried that, so. I taste it, that's super weird. It tastes like tricks or something. So check that out, witch's butter. Maybe I'm gonna have to reconsider my stance on Tremella Messerteneca because uh, the witch's butter, it's got like a fruity little thing going on, almost reminded me of a black truffle. That is weird. Definitely, that is super cool. It's like a, it's like pineapple smell. Kind of like a, a black truffle, so. Maybe I've underestimated witch's butter my whole life. I'll admit it, you know what I mean? Sometimes we're wrong. So, uh, yeah, let's keep on uh, heading into these woods and uh, it's starting to get dark out here, so. It's gonna get, uh, it's gonna get snowy out here soon. And I look forward to that, I love the snow, but it is kind of sad to see the mushrooms go and then uh, makes it a little bit challenging for making these videos, but don't worry. I got a lot of footage, so we're gonna keep making mushroom related content for your delight uh, for months to come, hopefully years, you know. Here we're coming into a little bit more of a wetlandy area and I could tell because of, because of all this brush over here, this is uh, all this uh, sword ferns, you know. These sword ferns really like to grow in really wet areas and then I see all these alder trees, see all these deciduous trees missing their leaves. Those are alder trees and uh, they love growing in wetland and so, a lot of saprotrophic mushrooms or mushrooms decaying uh, dying matter here leaf uh, leaf matter and and uh, decaying rotten wood uh, the wood lovers they like these kind of areas and so uh, psilocybe mushrooms you know would be growing in an area like this where there's a lot of uh, alder debris but uh, it's a little bit rare to be finding them out in the woodland like this uh, save for a couple of species here in the Northwest um, but I have found uh, Psilocybe cyanescence just growing wild in the grass uh, underneath some alder trees before, so it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. So here we go. We've come across a, uh, a bigger mushroom growing here in the forest. Finally, it's just a lot of those Inosibes, so this one's pretty mature. We're going to have to flip it over see what we got here. I can already tell you what it is just by the way that stem broke. See how clean that stem broke off? This is a russula. This is in the genus russula, and this is a, one of the brown russulas that grow here. 
in the northwest kind of more rare one but i see them grow back in the same spot every year because this too is a uh, mycorrhizal mushroom so the russula uh, brown russula yeah oh look at right here we got kind of a cool one growing right here trail side and look at this right here mid-december really stout little guy see can we look underneath let's see let's turn that on oh beautiful look at that red stem on there beautiful dark cap really kind of a smooth dark cap it's kind of short and squat and whoa look at that look at how long that that stem base is it's way down in there that's a beauty so this one is called zero camellus ultra purpureus so the purpureus part stands for purple because they do have kind of a purple cap this one's wet and they can kind of take on different shades of color uh, but they always have this kind of rusty striped red stipe this stem right here this yellow pore surface underneath and uh you know it looks a uh, looks a lot like a zeller's bolete or zero columellus uh, zellerii and a lot of people still call these zeller's boletes although they have been found to be a a different uh, species than the zeller's bolete um, the zellers do occur here pretty rare though but it has a really light colored margin um, where this one is pretty much dark right to the edge of the of the cap right there you see that that's called the margin so yeah the zero camellus atro purpureus this one is a uh, is a good edible mushroom you can eat that one um, we're gonna just kind of leave it here though i'm not interested in just eating one but uh there you go if, it, if you used to call that the zeller's bully chances are that it is the uh the uh, new one you know the zero camellus atro purpureus oh and then look right here we got some more these ones are brown inosibes probably uh pretty much the same thing as those white ones um, very closely related a lot of these mushrooms are toxic and poisonous so um, leave these ones alone see that real umbinate cap again it's got that real nipple in the middle and then it's like stripes going around it you know cons you know these stripes go down from the tip of the nipple to the edge of the uh, margin right there and uh, that's a good way to indicate an inosibe species but uh well, yeah some of them are pretty poisonous so just avoid those but you know then you can know what they're called uh, know how to spot at least the genus Inosibi. So uh, kind of cool. The uh, Zero Camellus atropurpureus growing here in middle of December in the PNW. So check out this guy that's uh, growing here and I seen it a while ago and it, it seems to have fallen over but but this was a pretty mushroom this was a uh, this was a uh, Cortinarius violaceus so the uh, the violet court or the purple court look how fuzzy the cap is it's just soaked right now you can't really see but I mean this is like hair on here you know I get these really orange really orange spores but it's all but black now you know this thing's just uh, it's just died it's dead now come on wake up wake up nope it's done but uh i'm sure it got its spores out and uh this is a very photogenic beautiful mushroom i actually took a beautiful picture of this mushroom about three weeks ago so i don't know this has been here for at least a month but uh it's finally uh it's going back to the earth so there you go cortinarius violaceus yeah, so these right here, uh, common mycorrhizal mushroom here in the Pacific Northwest. Mycorrhizal means that it's growing with some of these conifer trees, like this big, huge fir tree growing right here. These are growing literally right at the base of it. So I would bet that the uh, the uh, little hyphae uh, in the mycelium of this mushroom is connected to the roots of this big, huge fir tree. And um, this is known as the Russula breva peas or the short-footed Russula. Uh, some people say Rusula, some people say Rushala, uh, whatever you want to say. I used to say Rusula, but then I met a bunch of people that would always call it Rusula, so that kind of stuck, even though it sounds like the very Americanized version of Rusula. I guess the guy who named these actually calls them Rushala, which I have a hard time saying that, but uh, yeah, this one's a pretty boring mushroom. David Aurora calls it the most boring mushroom in the forest in the book Mushrooms Demystified. And uh, 
So there's just not a lot of outstanding characteristics. It's really kind of funnel shaped, but it is big. It's big, hardy mushrooms. They often grow in big troops and uh, they just have these white gills kind of stop in the same place on the stipe. It's got one of these real brittle stipes. So in Europe, they call these the brittle gill. You see how that breaks straight across? Um, so Russell is our brittle gill mushrooms because they're brittle like that. They break just like styrofoam or something. They don't string off or bend. And uh, yeah, when this one gets parasitized by a certain parasitic fungi known as Hypomyces lactiflorum, it becomes the Russula. It becomes a lobster mushroom. And it's a lobster mushroom selling the market. Very popular wild edible around here in the PNW. But this really common huge toadstool here in the Pacific Northwest is just known as the Russula brevipes. Very, very common. Some people mistake uh, them for matsutake, which isn't a big deal because these are edible. And I look down here on this log, and would you look right here? And what we have here is a pretty popular wild edible mushroom here in the Northwest. Look, it's got this kind of dimpled cap. It's sort of darker right in this, right in the disc. That's the center of the cap. This margin gets pretty thin and it's a little bit ruffly. Right here, there's a, another one trying to grow right there. But uh, these do like growing on the dead wood and they are mycorrhizal. So this, I'm gonna try to get it off of here so you can see the whole stem base. But this mushroom is known as the winter chanterelle or the yellowfoot chanterelle. This one's not showing the most yellow of feet. And uh, this is a great edible mushroom. It's actually not even related to the golden chanterelle. This is a completely different genus. This is Craterellus tubeformis. Uh, we've got a bunch more of the Craterellus tubeformis. The uh, winter chanterelle, or the golden foot, or the yellowfoot chanterelle. So see how yellow that foot looks down here very bright colored and these are uh, pretty gold and kind of funnel shaped so uh, we got quite a few of them growing in this little patch I'm definitely taking these because I do think they're really good and uh, these are an exciting fun edible late season mushroom here in the PNW So sorry about any kind of like shoddy camera work. Some signs of uh, trees, debris falling down. This time of year in Western Washington, uh, I imagine Western Oregon, it gets pretty windy, man. We have windstorms whip through here and they'll be snapping these trees off. Look at that widow maker, holy smoke. So be aware when you're out here, it's just late in the season when it's kind of stormy weather of what's around you, you know, big widow makers like that. You know, if it's a really windy day, maybe avoid this trail. Uh, just saying. It's good to be conscious of your surroundings when you're out here in the woods. Anything could happen. Oh, look right here as we're heading up out of the woods. These ones are another common, really common. Whoa, it's like a peach pit right there. That's not native. Pretty sure that's not native, but uh, oh yeah, see this? It's got sort of a violet hue underneath the bottom of it and kind of this tan color on the cap. And uh, these ones I've shown in a couple other videos and these are another late season mushroom. You see these growing pretty late in the season. And I got that really wavy edge on the, uh, on the cap there on the margin. These ones are all dirty, covered in sand and whatnot. It's just been pouring rain, so it's splashing dirt up underneath onto them, but uh, yeah, this is uh, called the uh, Lacaria lacata. This could be Lacaria bicolor. Either way, it's in the genus Lacaria. And uh, these are an edible mushroom. And uh, let me clarify that. These are edible. Uh, so you could eat these. And I've even heard that the caps taste a bit like the uh, grocery store button mushroom, the Agaricus, the Agaricus bisporus. So uh, Lacaria lacata or Lacaria bicolor, another common late season mushroom here in the PNW mid-December. What you doing, boy? <laughs> Get all stinky to, all wet and stinky to go in the car. Cool. In the truck, I guess, but still. He stinks when he's wet, man. I don't know what to do about that. Look at how beautiful it is out here. You just gotta appreciate the outdoors, man. 
This is part of why I got into mushroom hunting because uh, it gave me a good excuse to be out here in the beautiful outdoors. Isn't this a beautiful area, man? Look at this. This is a beaver pond. You know, in a different video, I called it a beaver swamp, and somebody laughed about that. And it's kind of funny. Beaver swamp. But uh, it's beautiful, man. I can't wait uh, for snow to be covering all these trees. It's so quiet and serene out here. This is a great oyster mushroom spot, by the way. Uh, these alders that are growing up out of the water, the water line's not that high, um, you know, in late summer and in fall. Uh, so you can find a lot of oyster mushrooms growing on these trees on the dead snags and stuff, Pleurota species. Uh, easy one to head out in search of because they grow like crazy around here. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, hey guys, I had a lot of fun walking out in the woods with you today. Seeing what kind of mushrooms are growing out here in the middle of December, Western Washington. This beautiful, cold, rainy, 38 degree, slushy rain kind of day. Just me and my dog doing our thing. Probably one of our last times foraging out here in the woods. So if you're new to Mushroom Wonderland, hit subscribe, man, because whenever there's mushrooms growing, I'm making a video about them. And uh, next spring, we're going to be talking morels again and all those cool spring mushrooms that are pretty different from the ones that you're finding right now. And I've got a lot of uh, videos on deck to be releasing all through the winter. So if you got the mushroom fever, uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And I appreciate you joining. So thanks a lot and take care. We'll see you next week. Later.